Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're doing a little plasma cutting. I'm making a metal sign as a backdrop for a new welding area that I'm setting up. And I'm doing some thin sheet metal plasma cutting and a little bit thicker stuff too. And there's a sign. I've got a new welding area. I was trying to step up my game a little bit and have a better place to shoot videos so I can shoot better videos. So that metal sign is going to be my backdrop. Now the way I did it, it's 16 gauge hot rolled and I laid it out kind of with, uh, on scale to the banner on my website and I just used some blue uh, painting trim tape to lay the letters out and kind of eyeballed everything, got it pretty neat using straight edge and you know soapstone and everything. And it's nine feet long and uh, I'm just going to cut it out and uh, hang it up on that pegboard that you saw earlier. So I'm setting up my portable welding table here. I've got the get at the same height as those sawhorses, roughly, so that I can uh, pull it out by the big roll-up door, because I don't really want to breathe that smoke today. So I'm going to blow it out the door. So the portable welding table just happened to be able to be set at just about the right height as the sawhorses, so that gives me something to kind of clamp it to, so it won't go anywhere when I start cutting things and they start coming loose. Now today I'm using a Miller Spectrum 625 Extreme Plasma Cutter. And here it is all unboxed. <clears throat> you can see all the stuff that comes with it, the hard shell carrying case, and uh, it's all laid out there. One thing I find, find pretty cool is that the, uh, this thing comes with a couple of pigtail adapters. So it's got a twist lock plug, and then you got a 115, 120 volt type uh, household type pigtail, and then another 220 to 240 type type uh, outlet, kind of like a dryer outlet adapter. And the ground clamp is way better than average with the uh, copper alloy dimpled jaw on it. There, that's ground clamp is really important on a plasma cutter for safety reasons. Another safety feature is the. Uh, trigger lock here. You'll never accidentally pull the trigger on this thing. Got a spring-loaded trigger lock. And just to give you an idea of the size of this thing, I set this little cordless drill motor up next to it. It's very small. It's not much bigger than a Power Ranger lunchbox. See, I've got my hand up there just to kind of give you some reference. It's hard to really tell how uh, portable and small it is without some kind of reference point. You can see my 54-year-old tendonitis elbows are able to pick it up like that. So for the most of the cutting I'm going to do, I'm going to use this drag tip today. And you can see it's got the tip recessed a little bit back in there and then some relief slots to allow the gases and sparks to escape. And that's the handiest thing for sheet metal ever. You can just drag it along just like that and uh, use a straight edge if you want to and everything. So I'm going to use that a whole lot today on this sheet metal. And we'll take it apart here and see how it uh, goes together and talk about some of the consumables a little bit. Basically, here are the here are the parts to uh, plas to most uh, most plasma cutters are roughly the same. They got these same parts. This little ceramic. Uh, some of them call it a diffuser. Some of them call it a swirler. But basically, it's a ceramic little thing that uh, gets that gas to swirling in there to create the ionizing plasma gas. Then you got your electrode. And then the nozzle with an orifice hole in there that constricts the arc from the electrode. And a little collar here that holds it all together. And then uh, whether or not, whether, depending on which type of uh, attachment you use, you can use the drag tip or you can use one of these if you just want, if you're going to make a bunch of uh, tight turns and you want to see exactly where you're going. Or sometimes if you want to cut thicker metal or. Uh, you know, see see the arc and see exactly where you're going. This is the way to go, but you have to maintain your own arc length that way as opposed to dragging. So, what about eye protection? If you watch many, uh, you know, uh, gearhead shows like Monster Garage and others, you you would think that all you need is a pair of uh, sunglasses to plasma cut in, but not good enough for me. I want I want a little eye protection. So uh, this Miller Digital Elite has got different modes on it. One of them is a cutting mode, lets you go to shade five. You can also go down to shade 8 on welding mode or shade 3 on grinding mode. 
So for me, it's just my opinion what I do. I'll use shade 3 sometimes if I'm using this drag tip where most of the light is blocked. Where I don't even can't even see it because it's blocked by the drag tip. But if I'm doing heavier uh, heavier work that's where the arc is exposed, I will set uh, set it on welding mode and use a shade 8. That's just me. You need to follow the, you know, uh, safety precautions and all the guidelines as far as recommended shades and everything there. Again, the grounding clamp here is better than average. You got the copper dimple jaws, and uh, because plasma cutting, you know, uses a little more voltage than uh, welding sometimes, it's, it's, it's good to have a good, good ground just for safety's sake. Now I'm using this fan here to blow the smoke out the door. I'm going to have my back to it. And so hopefully it's going to blow most of those fumes out the door and I won't have to deal with them. So we're ready to go here. Got the drag tip set up. And actually for the first cut here, I only had it, I had it set uh, plugged into uh, the 120 volt connection. And it has actually about a 100 foot drop cord, but it still managed to uh, make a good cut there to start with. But I decided that I didn't really want a straight cut, even though this makes about a 50 thousandths width kerf, a uh, nice straight cut. I decided I want to go with the kind of a rough metal, you know, intentionally rough cut look. So I'm just going to freehand everything. Still using that drag tip, but just uh, just freehanding so I'll get a little wobble and a little shakiness and everything. But uh, I, th I think it would go well with the look I'm trying to obtain here as a cut metal look that kind of goes along with the uh, logo on the website. Now I've got this sped up here at about 200%. So I want you to think that I'm zipping along this fast, but it's still pretty, it's pretty fast. And using that tape, you can see the tape's trying to curl up, but it still provides me a good uh, straight edge without having to mark everything up with a soapstone or a marker. So it's going along here just fine. Again, I'm using that drag tip and just putting the slightest bit of pressure on the uh, against the metal. And I did some experimenting. I, I changed off from the drag tip to the uh, other tip and just uh, freehanded just to see which one worked better. You can see I'm doing a little bit, a little bit more shakiness here. But I think that's going to add to the overall look anyway, so I'm not really worried about having a perfectly straight cut on these letters. I want it to look rough cut. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Again, this is hot rolled 16 gauge, which is 1 16th inch thick. Slices through it like butter. Now you can see I made an outline overall with uh, soapstone, just freehanding. And when I cut it, I'm just going to I'm just going to freehand also with the drag tip, and I'm going to intentionally wiggle and uh, make it wavy because. Uh, that's kind of how the logo on the WeldingTipsAndTricks.com website looks and uh, kind of want to halfway, you know, follow suit with that. You can see here I'm just straight up freehanding, dragging that thing. I'm going just slow enough so it cuts through it. If I go too fast, you know, it won't cut all the way through. It just blows back, and then you have to come back and recut or beat it loose, and I don't want to do that, so. Just about done. And just to... Uh, make use of the scrap. I'm going to even this up. 
I want to store this piece away with all those odd shapes on it because it just doesn't store very well like that. So using this piece of angle iron and that drag tip, I can make a nice cut. It's like a, you know, it's like a poor man's shear, really. You can get a straight, straight cut almost as good as you can with a metal shear. But what about thick metal here? All right, what I've got here is 3 8 thick uh, plate that was welded. I used this in another video to do an overhead MIG. But this is 3 8 uh, 3 8 plate. And I'm just cutting alongside that weld. This would be a good way for schools to uh, kind of help their budget out a little bit. Uh, students could learn how to use a plasma cutter and have a steady hand also and cut the welds out of plates like this. And then reuse them at least once. Cut the weld out and then put a bevel on the, uh, the plate and reuse it. I'm going to set it up here on that portable welding table. Again, it's got a little fence there, so I've got it uh, clamped there, and I'm just using this piece of aluminum to, uh, as a spacer. You could use a 4x4, four 2x4, four, four, whatever, just to get, get my hands spaced up enough. But I'm going to put a bevel on this now, and I like to, I like to bevel them uh, from the sharp edge outward to blow the dross to the thick part like this. And I'll show you why in a minute, because it just cleans up a whole lot easier the chip and hammer because uh, when that dross blows, the slag hangs on that thick part. It doesn't it doesn't hang too too hard, and once it cools off, it'll just chip right off. 